Hi and welcome back to Serbia. Today I'm going to go on an excursion from Belgrade to uh, the eastern part of Serbia and uh, I'm going to look at a whole bunch of really interesting sites. Hi and welcome to this video of Serbia. Well, I will continue my series of travel videos in Serbia with a travel to Eastern Serbia to explore some of the best historic sites in Eastern Europe. This part of the country may be one of the least known places in Europe and off the major tourist maps, but I'm sure this will change in the near future. What I like in Serbia is that there are so many hidden gems waiting to be discovered. During my trip through Serbia, I was blown away by the beauty of this country that makes for great off the beaten path travel. If you like nature and want to see history in Eastern Europe, this Serbia video is for you. We'll check out Viminasium, a Roman settlement and a historic place worth seeing. See an actual mammoth skeleton at the Mammoth Park, visit Ram Castle, an Ottoman fortification at the Danube, and finish this video with a real highlight, a visit to the famous Golubac Castle at the Jerdak Porch, Europe's largest gorge, also known as the Iron Gate. Golubac Castle is an awe-inspiring massive medieval fortress in a most dramatic location right at the Danube and one of the major historic sites in Eastern Europe. So lots to see, let's check it out. I planned my visit to Eastern Serbia as a day trip from Belgrade and everything you see in the Serbia video will fit into a one-day itinerary from Belgrade. Naturally, there is so much more to see in Eastern Serbia, but this video should present some of the main highlights you don't want to miss when visiting this amazing country in Europe. For this trip, you will want to rent a car, as most of the sites will be difficult to get to otherwise, unless you book a tour with a tour operator. My first stop will be Bibinatio. After one and a half hour drive southeast of Belgrade, we reach this former military camp of the Roman province of Moesia. The city dates back to the first century AD, and at its peak, it is believed to have had 40,000 inhabitants, making it one of the biggest cities in the Balkans at the time and an important site in Eastern European history. It was completely destroyed with the arrival of the Slavs in the sixth century, and while only three to four percent of the site has been explored to date, Viminatium contains remains of temples, streets, squares, amphitheaters, palaces, hippodromes, Roman baths and over 15,000 graves. Viminatium was one of the most important Roman cities and military camps in the period of the 1st to the 4th centuries. Its exceptional strategic importance was reflected in its role both in the defense of the northern border of the Roman Empire and resulting from this as a major communications and commercial hub. A legion may have been stationed here as early as the times of Augustus, who was Roman Emperor when Jesus lived in today's Israel. This makes Viminatium a historic place in Europe, which I recommend you check out. As a caveat, the area around Viminatium is not as serene as one would hope. Large industrial mining structures cut into the scenery and I found them difficult to ignore. They rebuilt a whole Roman fortress and turned that into some sort of a conference center uh, with accommodations and a cafeteria and lecture halls. Um, pretty cool if you want to check out what a Roman fortress looked like back in the days. On the edge of the archaeological park, Domo Sintiara Meninatium, a new scientific research and tourist center was built in the style of a Roman villa, with rooms and laboratories grouped around several atria. The Domus hosts an archaeological museum, a scientific library, laboratories for processing archaeological finds, an information center, conference rooms, a restaurant with dining hall and spa center in the form of a Roman bath. There are also bedrooms available for researchers, students and visitors. And while Viminasium is a fascinating place to see, for me the real highlight there was Mammoth Park, which shows excavations of the world's most impressive mammal from one million years ago. The remains of the mammoths were found by the coal miners in the nearby mines and are now on display here, together with a 50,000 year old tree trunk found in 2009. Even if you're not an archaeological enthusiast, the sight of the huge bones is truly impressive.
Let's head to our next stop, which is a half an hour drive away from Wibinazio, Ram Fortress. Rem Fortress is a 15th century fort situated on a steep slope on the right bank of the Danube, in the village of Ram in eastern Serbia. The fortress is located on a rock which offers impressive views of the Danube. On some older maps, the fortress is marked by the name Hram. I read about the tale that the Ottoman Sultan came to the place to do his prayers. He liked the location so much that subsequently he ordered his army to build a fortress of the remains of older fortifications that date back to the Celtic and Roman times. The name Ram is thus believed to stem from the word Ikram, which sets the direction of prayer in Islam. The fortress takes the shape of an irregular pentagon with thick walls that were designed to withstand heavy cannon warfare. It has recently been renovated and is in great shape. The five towers have a total of 36 cannon embrasures, which means at least 100 soldiers were needed to operate the artillery. We can see remains of a mosque in the central part of the inner section, and the walk on the outer walls that connect the towers is truly impressive. From Ram Fortress, we will take the beautiful drive along the Danube to the final destination and highlight of the tour, Kolobats Fortress, which is a must-see of any Eastern Europe history travel and one of the great castles to visit in Serbia. After a little less than an hour, we will reach Kolobats Fortress, one of the most beautiful castles in Europe. Kolobats Fortress was a medieval fortified town on the south side of the Danube River, which is located just 4 kilometers or 2.5 miles downstream from the modern-day town of Kolobats. The fortress was built during the 14th century, during the time of the medieval Serbian state. It has 10 towers that are not connected for easier defense and are located on a dramatic steep slope at the entrance of the Jedab Gorge, the Iron Gates of the Danube. Golubac's fortress has had a tumultuous history. During the Middle Ages, it became the object of many battles between the Ottoman Empire and the Kingdom of Hungary. The fortress has a distinction of successfully repelling over 120 conquering attacks during history, but it also changed hands repeatedly passing between Turks, Bulgarians, Hungarians, Serbs and Austrians. Today, it is a popular tourist attraction in the region and a major sightseeing point on Danube boat tours. And if you are into historic castles, I'd say it's a must-see. There is paid parking, which is included in the ticket price, and you can take different tours, one of which takes you to the lookouts and the upper towers, but you will have to climb the steep hill. Some great exhibitions in the halls that are located down by the river offer some great insights into the history of the castle. Let's check out more of Golubac, which might be one of the best castles to visit in the world, but certainly in this region.
Golubac fortress at the entrance of the Jelab Gorge is definitely a must see when you come to Serbia. Entrance is uh, 600 Serbian dinar, about $6. And definitely worth it. And you can have different tours. You can even have like a climbing tour all the way up there, which I didn't do. Um, but uh, definitely worth coming here. Very cool sight to see. I was going to drive for the south to another historic site, the Penske Vier. The Penske Vier is an important archaeological site from 9500 to 7200 BC. Unfortunately, a flat tire forced me to turn around and get my car fixed for my return to Belgrade. So I ended up not going there. Alright, I hope you enjoyed this video on Eastern Serbia. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up and leave me a comment down below. And if you haven't done so yet, please subscribe to my channel. And I hope I see you in the next video. Have a good one. Bye-bye.